City, which is uh, under construction right now and will be uh, scheduled for being finished in uh, spring 2024. Um, this in-house rendering you see right now gives a good idea of the, um, the build-up of the or the, the makeup of the, the building. We see it as a three-part building really. There's the base um, being the, uh, the basement, underground parking, the so-called uh, turb level that you see here in a, a brick clad wall. Uh, and the ground floor, uh, which is cleared in the equitone panels, uh, seen in gray here. The uh, obvious, the biggest part of the building is would be the high-rise part that you see here in uh, cleared in um, large wood, um, and then it has a protective layer on another level of uh, facade made of glass, a, a removable glass facade, so to speak. The third bit would be the uh, six-story housing block on the right-hand side of the building, which is also cleared in uh, solid um, large wood panels or cladding and uh, pre-treated with uh, a grayish or dark gray, 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 gray color. Um, on this graphic, you see the location again, which is on the eastern end of the Hafen City, Hamburg. The Hafen City probably known by many as a central, uh, well, um, a former harbor area quite close to the uh, historic center of Hamburg. Uh, our location within the Hafen City is at the eastern end of the Barkenhafen, an old, unused um, harbor basin, very close to the uh, new, or between the new uh, subway stations, Hafen City University and Eibrück, and uh, um, marked mark by the U's and the S on this uh, graphic. Um, again, on this picture of the Hafen City, or part rendering, part uh, aerial photograph, you see the location uh, in its relation to landmarks that had already been built or are under construction. You see the uh, quite prominently in the, in the front at the western tip of the Alphen City, the uh, Elbphilharmonie by Herzog de Miro. And in the far right upper corner, you see the uh, um, uh, Chipperfields Elb Tower also under construction as we speak. Again, more buildings will be added um, uh, in the near future to the Barkenhafen area. Um, this site plan uh, gives you a better idea how the building settles within its direct neighborhood. So this is in the north, the northeast and uh, southeast, uh, it's all housing blocks. And uh, to the south or southwest, we have the uh, Barkenhafen, the, the old former Hafen uh, basin, the, the unused one. You can also see that the, the high rise and the, uh, the building block, now the, the, the housing block, uh, created some sort of inner courtyard, which will be uh, housing a, um, a playground, which is mandatory in Hamburg if you build new houses um, and new housing, and also private gardens for the uh, first floor um, uh, flats of the uh, of the housing housing block. Um, the high rise uh, occupants will also have access to the uh, to the courtyard. The uh, open space uh, on the uh, western northwestern tip of the building is. Um, actually the roof of the, the so-called turb level and also public uh, space for people to enjoy themselves really. At the uh, southeastern end, you see this uh, so-called passageway, which uh, actually gives public access, again, uh, on the roof of the so-called turb level, all the way down to the Kai uh, Ebene, which is called, um, which is actually a promenade along the, uh, the Barkenhafen. Both uh, sides offer stairways all the way down to the um, to the Kai uh, Ebene. Um, this production drawing of the, uh, the basement shows you the parking layout, which was quite difficult to fit in into this uh, rather awkward, I'd say, um, geometry of the site. Um, it's actually accessed via car lifts on the, on, in the, in, on the right hand side of the, uh, the, the drawing. And all the parking had to be fitted with um, uh, loading stations for e-mobility. And as you can also see in the center and the, the eastern part of the, the garage, we had to fit in uh, double high park parking spaces or double parkers uh, in order to get all the uh, required uh, parking spaces in, into the building. 
This would be the drawing, production drawing of the um, uh, turp level, which is mainly made up of the uh, of half of, of one part of the exhibition space that also continues through most of the, um, the ground floor level. And these um, spaces are con connected via these two circular staircases that are visible at the um, western end, at the eastern end of the uh, of the exhibition space. And this, um, uh, and you see another straight uh, staircase in the uh, multimedia room or little cinema that we had to build or that is part of this exhibition space. Also, one can see the uh, rather big or large area that is uh, kept for bicycles, which is uh, we had to provide for 500 bicycles in this building for all the uh, well, all the occupiers and tenants. Um, we call this turp level turp level for a reason. It's not only providing space for the exhibition, but it's also providing um, flood protection for the Hafen city. Um, this is actually a requirement for all the build, new builds in, in the Hafen city that their their lower level uh, separate the uh, or the, uh, the so called Kai even or the the promenade from the higher lying areas beyond. And um, in order to achieve this, obviously we had to do something with the windows, and uh, that's commonly seen in the Hafen city as well. That windows on that level will be protected by flood gates that have to be closed by someone in case of a storm surge which happens for up to three to four times every winter in the, in the harbor area, as it is a, a tidal harbor and prone to storm surges during the winter season. Um, again, this is the, the, the floor plan of the uh, of production drawing floor plan of the, uh, the ground level. We recognize the, uh, the two circular staircases connecting the uh, two levels, the two exhibition spaces. And also, we can see the uh, get a better view of the the cinema, which connects also both levels with each other. At the eastern end, we can also see um, um, a restaurant, which is uh, will have provide quite nice views and will be connected to the uh, to the exhibition space. The exhibition will be um, uh, fitted out by the uh, Deutsche Wildtierstiftung, which is a foundation for the protection um, of wild animals in Germany. They will actually also um, use the, the office spaces that we are coming next to on the second, first and second floor. Again, that's a shot of the uh, ground floor, larger part of the exhibition space. You see that it looks quite um, high and, uh, and, and open right now. There will be a lot of uh, M&E, um, mechanical and electrical services though on the ceiling, uh, so the height will be quite reduced. Also what we can see is uh, quite high and massive um, beams and, and columns in this area, which will, um, which can be even, uh, become even more clearer over here and on this drawing where you seem to see a rather random uh, crisscrossing of beams, which are all necessary to Really take the uh, accommodate for the uh, quite different um, load bearing grids from the timber structure above with the uh, concrete structure coming up from below. So that's really was quite a, a challenge for the structural engineer in particular um, uh, to, to get this right in a way that it's also um, works with the, with the floor plans. Uh, also, these columns are these these. Uh, yeah, columns, elongated columns on the second floor um, level um, are the shape they are because of, of, of their need to really transfer the loads from the timber structure, which is a completely different um, load bearing grid to that of the concrete structure. Um, so that's why these uh, columns are so long to take the load from one end of, this, of the column really to the other. This is um, happening on the um, second floor office space, um, the last concrete floor of yeah, concrete construction or floor constructed in concrete in the high rise. This is a production drawing or a ground floor, uh, a floor plan of the of this first floor of the first floor of the drawing. Again we can see the um, um, office spaces in, in the high rise which are Part of the uh, of which will also belong to the uh, Deutsche Bildtier Stiftung, to this um, uh, foundation that is part owner will be part owner of the building, and um, the affordable housing in the uh, the six story housing block on the right hand side. The open spaces again, as described before, the internal courtyard, 
now here visible the uh, the private gardens for the tenants and um, rest on space seating areas on uh, on the right hand side again visible uh, the um, open space or the, the public space on the western end on the western tip of the building um this drawing shows a standard floor plan from the fourth to the uh, third to the uh, seventh floor um the, the the buildings are really not separated uh and and sorry scrap this please i have to start again so this drawing shows a floor a standard floor plan of the fourth uh, third to uh, seventh floor on the right hand side we see the affordable housing again mandatory uh, in hamburg uh, in, in the half city or at least at the, for this side we see the balconies as opposed to the uh, um to the um, lodgers in the, in the high rise. And the high rise, on the other hand, will be um, um, co contains of the uh, owner occupier. Well, sorry, scrap that again. I have to check something. So this drawing shows a standard level. This drawing shows a floor plan of a yeah, standard fourth to seventh ceiling floor plan. On the right hand side, we see the six story building block, um, housing block that is made up of uh, or contains affordable housing uh, flats. There will be 53 affordable uh, units as opposed to the 128 uh, freeholds in the high rise. Um, differences are mainly in size, obviously. The, um, Fit out is almost identical. Uh, one major difference again is that the uh, the, the housing, the the affordable housing, will have uh, balconies as uh, as the um, whereas the um, the high rise will have uh, lodges instead. Um, this graphic gives an overview of the uh, structural made up build up or made makeup of the building. Uh, again, we see the um, um, base that is con uh, constructed of concrete. For the reasons mentioned, it's actually right near the water. Uh, it's partly or almost at groundwater level uh, in the basement, and uh, therefore concrete was the, the choice of material. We see that the um, first four, two levels of the, of the high rise are also concrete for the uh, reasons mentioned. These need, are needed to transfer the loads from the uh, structural grid of the, um, of the timber build um, high rise into the uh, structural grid of the concrete building below. Um, we can also see that in the high rise itself and in the uh, six story housing block, there's more concrete. Um, and that is, comes down to building regulations in Hamburg, which uh, prescribe um, concrete staircases in, in timber buildings. So we have to have uh, concrete staircases at the high rise for the high rise and for the two, uh, and the two staircases in the, uh, in the lower part of the building. Uh, in addition to that, we also have to have the firewalls um, uh, made of concrete. That's also um, mandatory. The partition walls in the high rise are all made of uh, plasterboard walls, which are more efficient in terms of uh, their thickness and uh, sound performance. In the uh, lower part of the building, the, uh, six, the, the housing block, we have some in um, plasterboard and some in concrete um, for structural reasons and for soundproofing reasons. You can also see that the, the load bearing walls are actually not solid walls in themselves and uh, made of, of CLT. They are actually made of, uh, of, of timber columns in order to um, maximize the, or to, to get, well, in order not to use more timber than is necessary to transfer the loads or to um, make the building work, really. Um, this graphic gives a more detailed view of the all the components that go into the timber uh, construction of a, of, a, of a regular of a standard um, floor uh, in the high rise. You can see that these um, obviously the um, floor slab, the structural slab, is made up of uh, timber elements, CLT elements, which are spanning from the concrete core or concrete staircase um, onto the uh, first load bearing wall, which is um, made of, up of these. Uh, Timber columns, clad in, uh, in clad in plasterboard, and they then continue spanning towards the outer load-bearing wall and cantilever 
about 90 centimeters beyond that wall. Um, the red perimeter of that uh, slab is actually a uh, steel beam that runs all the way around the perimeter of the building on each floor to tie these separate um, uh, slab elements or, or CLT elements together and make them stiffer. Really. This graphic gives an idea of how we use different materials in, the, uh, in these columns, uh, depending on the uh, load or, or the, their position in the building. Obviously, further up in the building, the loads are much smaller than or lower than the uh, at the bottom. Uh, so at the, the, at the top uh, five to uh, four to five floors, we um, can use uh, GLT columns. Um, whereas we have to uh, switch to um, plywood columns uh, and then intermediate um, columns, uh, stories uh, at the lower end, third, five, fifth level, we even in some places we even need um, beach plywood in order to take the, um, the um, additional load from the upper floors. So that was something that the engineer worked on quite a bit to, to get it right and to use the, the right material at the right level and not to over-engineer uh, the bits at the, at the uh, higher up levels. Um, at the very early stages, we began um, the detailing of the wall buildups and the, uh, of, of the structure of the building in uh, cooperation with the structural engineer, the fire engineer, and the uh, uh, acoustician, really. And at the very beginning, we thought uh, we, we, we wanted to have a visible well, we wanted the external walls to be visibly made of timber from the inside, which uh, would have meant CLT, um, not CLT, sorry, GLT um, slabs uh, as external walls that clad from the outside, obviously, which uh, would not have needed any cladding on the inside for fireproofing. Um, during um, the development of the project, the, the developer figured out that uh, the market is not really looking for uh, timber surfaces and walls, at least not the market for freehold uh, flats. So the decision was made that they, the, all the walls and the ceilings should be clad in uh, plasterboard, which then led to the decision to reduce the, the amount of wood uh, to the necessary amount and go a step away from these uh, solid timber slabs or GLT slabs and use uh, CLT, uh, GLT um, columns instead. As a result, we had to clad them obviously in, in, uh, in plasterboard and fill all the cavities with, uh, uh, with insulation, which had to be a rather high spec insulation, uh, which was not, not found easily. And uh, we only found at the end one supplier of this high spec insulation that would work, um, fulfill all the requirements that uh, the fire engineer had defined. Um, here we see an overlay of one of our product, early on production drawings with one of our renderings. We also see um, how the uh, CLT slab spans across the, uh, the beam that connects the, uh, that spans uh, in itself the, uh, uh, the lodger, in, in the high, one of the lodgers in the high rise. What we also can see is that we, in order to get the uh, soundproofing that is required um, by Dean and Germany, um, we needed uh, additional load on the uh, CLT slabs. So we had uh, internally and on the inside of the building, we had to add 100 millimeters of uh, bound bulk in addition to the usual buildup of insulation and, and uh, screed. And even on the outside, although the, the usage would be much, much reduced, uh, as we supposed, we needed um, um, prefabricated con concrete slabs to put onto the CLT in order to get enough load or enough weight to um, get the soundproofing right. On top of that, then we have the uh, the timber, uh, the large large wood um, timber flooring. What is also visible um, on this uh, drawing slash um, visualization is the, the glass facade, which is needed for soundproofing again, because we, the, the site is in a rather, well, it's still quite close to um, harbor areas that are used as harbor areas. And uh, there's a lot of noise coming over from the harbor, as well as from the uh, Elbrücken uh, at the bridges over the Elbe for, um, uh, for, for trains and, and, the, and the, the motorway coming into Hamburg, and also train lines and tracks running uh, northeast of the building. So anyway, the um, the noise levels are quite substantial, and uh, in order to get uh, 
the soundproofing of the building right, we had to add this uh, layer of, um, of, a, of a glass facade, which also figure, features as a protective layer for the um, untreated um, large wood uh, timber cladding. Um, at the bottom, uh, sorry, at the top, right next to one of the beams, at the bottom as well, actually, right next to the uh, uh, one of the beams, uh, you can see a, a, a pipe that is actually indicating uh, that we need a, um, um, a sprinkler system for the outside, because in Germany, at least, uh, timber cladding is not permitted at high, at high rises. Flammable cladding is not permitted. In order to get away with it, we had to introduce a, a a uh, sprinkler, um, not only inside a sprinkler system, but also outside uh, around the perimeter of the building. Um, in order to make sure that we get it right uh, with the uh, soundproofing of the building, uh, we the, the developer then decided uh, in cooperation with the uh, respective engineer that we needed to build a two-level mock-up, which was built in Western Germany in a big hall, um, and the end we build, ended up uh, building two rooms on two levels each, and in the end, uh, and uh, built five different floor build-ups to test them. Uh, the right bottom corner, you can see test equipment of the engineers uh, checking whether whether we did find the right build-up. Um, we did, in the end, uh, Manage to reduce the uh, amount of measures that we had to take um, in order to get the soundproofing right, which was uh, basic, basically the benefit of spending all that money and all the effort into building this uh, this mock-up. Um, again, construction began in 2020 in autumn, right at the beginning of the storm season, season, which meant that the, uh, the site had to be stormproof with this makeshift uh, dike, if you will, made of sandbags, and which did not prevent us uh, the site from being flooded once, uh, uh, I'm afraid. So there was one storm surge that was too too big for even this makeshift dike, and uh, the site flooded, which was not a major disaster, but uh, this is what happens if you build right next to a tidal harbor. Um, this picture, Gives an idea, or is a, is a picture of the uh, the mock-up facade mock-up that was uh, mandated by the uh, building authorities in Hamburg. And without this kind of mock-up, we can't build in the Hafen City. And it was signed off in the end. It was uh, all to specification and all to the liking of the uh, authorities. And um, you can see again these these uh, steel beams that bind together the uh, structural sl uh, timber slabs, the uh, CLT slabs. You can see the sprinkler pipes. You can see the um, rainwater down pipes concentrated in this area. It will not look like this exactly in the in reality because the the um, sprinkler pipe on the right hand side, the vertical one, will not be as close to the um, rainwater down pipe in reality. But it gives one a, a quite a rather good idea, good idea uh, what the building will look like at the end, the, the high rise at least. What's not shown here is, or what's missing is, at the corners we will have to have um, a patterns. Um, on the glass uh, to prevent birds from flying into the building, into the corners of the building. Um, obviously, prefabrication is a big issue on this kind of building. Um, the um, contractor, uh, a company from uh, South Tyrol um, uh, and with major hubs in Austria and southern Germany, um, took their time to uh, figure out what kind of uh, subdivision they, they would like to achieve, uh, on what kind of division they were looking for in terms of, sorry, scrap that, I have to start again. Um, uh, prefabrication is obviously quite a big uh, issue on this uh, project. So the uh, contractor, timber contractor, who's going to build, the, uh, who's building these, uh, these um, prefabricated elements decided to build elements, facade or external wall elements of up to 14 meter in length. That sometimes includes up one or two lodges, including their soffits and um, and the steel, not the steel beams though. Uh, they will be transported to site from Austria where they are being produced uh, to Hamburg and then um, put into place with the, uh, with the due care, obviously. This is a picture of uh, one of the, um, Elements of the lower rise building, of the um, sorry, 
Let's grab that, please, again. There's a picture um, from the production uh, line in Austria, which shows a finished and uh, ready to transport element of the uh, affordable housing part of the building. We see this as the um, uh, pre treated on the um, surface. It's painted in a dark, rather dark uh, gray, as that is the color that is we assume, or one has to assume, the, the large, untreated large would actually take on over the years in, in the climate that we have here in the Hamburg Harbor, which is almost a, um, well, which is rather damp and uh, has even salt in, in, in the air due to the proximity of the North Sea and the, and the tidal uh, and the tides coming in. Um, this element is the second is already resting on a um, on a rack that will then just be put onto the uh, uh, tr um, truck and uh, being shipped to Germany. Um, this again is a uh, an element of the um, of the high rise untreated as we have the glass facade in front of it being prepared for being lifted into place. We were quite lucky this summer with the uh, uh, the weather. Uh, usually it's quite windy here in Hamburg, so that can be a big problem uh, if you want to fit uh, big or large scale uh, prefabricated elements. Uh, this summer was really sunny and dry and uh, not very windy, so progress was good on site and we are on schedule to uh, finish one story uh, within every three weeks, uh, if the weather holds, though, that is. Here we see the uh, element being lifted into place. Uh, we might get, have gotten a bit overexcited and take a lot of pictures of that as it's uh, quite a critical uh, moment uh, in, in this project. Again, the same element being lowered down on, into its position and fit into place. This is the one of the 14 meter elements on this photograph uh, put into place and ready to be um, fixated. Um, one can see uh, through the windows, you can see um, the struts that hold them into place until they have, they, the ceilings are put in place. Uh, you can also see uh, between the uh, between the uh, two lodges, there's a um, extended column going up through the, uh, the soffit. Um, that's explained by the fact that the uh, uh, floor slabs are cantilevering over the um, over the external wall and are slotted into these um, have holes that slot into these uh, columns or the other way around these these columns slot into holes into those um, soffit into those um, structural timber slabs. Again, the uh, the uh, unfinished, untreated um, uh, large wood uh, cladding is clearly visible. You can also see cables that are all pre-fitted in the uh, 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 during construction in uh, in the uh, in, in Austria. Um, also visible on this uh, picture is the, uh, the perforation of the um, of the soffit of these lodges, which is also necessary for sound uh, for for to get the noise levels down in front of these windows. Again, an ins uh, a ready installed or finished um, part of the uh, almost finished part of the um, um, external wall of the um, affordable housing part of the building. We see a little cutout at the left bottom of the of the picture, which is uh, um, there to allow for the uh, the balconies to be fitted uh, in, uh, in heights, uh, afterwards once the uh, the um, uh, scaffolding is removed. And now we're coming slowly to the end of my presentation, of my little, little talk about this building. This is a picture taken from the second floor, uh, one of the office spaces before the walls. Uh, sorry, the third floor, the first level of uh, housing above the, uh, the office uh, level. And you uh, looking towards the uh, Elbphilharmonie to the west, uh, giving an idea of what the views will be like from the, uh, from the flats in the high rise, of some of the flats in the high rise, the ones with Western orientation and the offices. And also give you an idea how what a special location this really is, as not all these buildings in the Hafen City obviously will have looks or views, views like this. Uh, finally, a last uh, rendering, an uh, um, evening mood, so to speak, um, of the building. And that is really 
what I have to say about the uh, roots building in Hamburg. Thank you very much.